On September 8th of this year, both Cardinal Dolan, who is the current Archbishop of New York, and Cardinal Egan, who had been Archbishop, uh, came to the Catholic Center and dedicated the chapel and the rest of the center for its use as the home uh, for Catholic students here at New York University. It's really different coming here and trying to be like a good, a good Catholic, because it's almost like the city of sin. There's so much going on that can like take you away from your faith. I was getting carried away throughout it other excitement of New York. It's easier to hold on to your faith when you have other Catholics around you than for you to be out there alone. People tend to think that you're stupid if you believe in God or the church, which is seen as this kind of backwards institution. Many of my professors um, are, are against religion or don't believe in God, so it is difficult to be a Catholic at NYU sometimes. To be a Catholic in the midst of a place like New York City is a particular situation, and that requires a number of things that it might not require otherwise. First of all, because it's such a kind of large, secular, and even bigger than that, kind of diverse culture, there's not much you can kind of assume when you're interacting with people or talking with people. It requires you to, in a certain sense, own your faith more and more deeply uh, and to have a reason for the faith that is in you because it's not something that uh, the people around you will just kind of take for granted or be able to engage you on that level. And one of the things you discover as a chaplain here is that secular life is largely ignorant of religion and the ignorance is much more dangerous than hostility. An informed enemy is much more easy to deal with than an ignorant enemy because you have to deconstruct so many false perceptions in order to be able to begin a dialogue. But what we're trying to give here to the students is a sense of confidence in their faith, that it is intellectually respectable, that it is defensible, that it is not nonsense, and that they're not, if they engage in religious practice, psychologically disturbed, which is the message which actually the world often gives. If you're religious, you're crazy, you're a fanatic, you're fundamentalist, but our task is actually to say, well, this is rationally defensible. But when I found out that the Catholic Center exists here, it's like, hey, there's this bunch of people here who are similar to you, similar background, similar struggles and similar strive for holiness, and you could come join us, you know? I don't think that I would be the person or the Catholic that I am today if I hadn't come to NYU, because I would go to Mass at St. Joseph's, and see all the students there who were there because they wanted to be, not because their parents were making them or not because it was cultural in any way. It's actually really countercultural to go to Mass or to be a Catholic. And I think that that makes us stronger in our faith because we have to sit down and say, do I believe this? Is it important to me? And really make a stand um, and show that we love God and we love our neighbors and we're not scared to say that. Be not afraid. What we're doing is responding with faith to that exhortation of God, the Father in his son Jesus, be not afraid. We're not afraid smack dab in the middle of one of America's finest universities, smack dab in the middle of what John Paul II called the capital of the world, smack dab in the middle of Greenwich Village, we're not afraid to say this is where the Catholic Church belongs. We are about the intersection of faith and reason, we are about culture, we are about learning, and we want to be right smack dab in the middle of this public square, of this university, because we are not afraid. I love the idea that the Catholic community has a space in such a secular university. There's been a Catholic center here since 1964, but um, a few years ago it was decided that a new campus building would come here and the Catholic center would exist as the first floor of this new center. And the new building offers a variety of facilities. There's a chapel, of course, uh, meeting rooms and a common room where the students can come and hang out, meet each other. Having a Catholic center on the university campus has had a tremendous impact. 
Um, it's of the 40,000 students that attend the university, it is said that approximately 18,000 of them are Catholic. I use the lounge area um, quite a bit during the week, so I'm always in here because you know the fireplace, it's quiet, and it's somewhere you can kind of see people, um, interact a little bit, but also be productive. I think that it's the perfect place to study. I just really like it. There's daily mass here at 5.15 with an hour of adoration beforehand and approximately 9 to 6 p.m. The friars are available for spiritual direction, confession, to answer questions, to um, really hang out with the students. Um, and then there are multiple, multiple events that we'll meet here in the evenings um, or the late afternoons. And you can really see that different groups are coming together into the same location for the first time. I find it to be a second home because I am commuting and uh, it can be difficult sometimes, so it's great to be able to come in and be able to meet my friends here, do my homework here, make lunch, um, just be able to have a place on campus to go to that's comfortable and welcoming. The new building offers a kitchen where they can prepare food because, as you know, students like to eat and to drink and it uh, brings them together. Regardless of where you are, it's tough being a Catholic, but so far it's been easier for me to be a Catholic here in New York for some reason. And, I, and I, now that you mention it, I think it is because of this Catholic center. The Catholic community here, I mean, we see each other more now, as from, from in my experience, just by having this space to meet. So we get to meet new people. It is a very tight-knit community, very loving, very supportive. Uh, I love everyone here and it's always a joy to get together with them, whether in meetings or outside of meetings, just hanging out and we have good times together and help each other grow in our faith. We like to present it as a home from home because many students, new students particularly, find it difficult to settle if they come from, say, smaller cities, smaller towns, to come to the hurly-burly of New York is very disorientating for them. So here they can find uh, friends, uh, community, a space for prayer, a space for developing their, their life of faith. The missionaries in the past went out on campus and they had these students, uh, they engaged students, but they didn't have a place to send them uh, as easily. They didn't have this big beacon of Catholic uh, identity that was sitting there on campus. And now we have students walking by every day who will come in and say, I'm Catholic. Uh, and whatever degree of their faith they're in, they say, I'm, I want to get involved, I want to, I want to develop my faith further. The aim of, of, the, of the chaplaincy and the, the chaplains would be to broaden the general religious and cultural vision of those who come here. First and foremost, we want the Catholic Center to be a place of prayer, that people know that uh, this is not just a hangout place. This is a place where God is worshipped and where people come to be connected to God and come to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And as Catholics, that has to remain first and foremost. And so any place that's dedicated uh, by the church and for the church's use has to have that as its primary goal. And so to the establishment of the sacramental life here and the life of prayer and to have that ongoing is uh, certainly the first goal. And in some ways, just as important as the life of worship is uh, the investigation and learning and teaching of the Catholic faith. And so this has to be a place where the truth is taught, the truth of the Catholic faith is loved and reverenced and taught and investigated um, and discussed in a deep way so that when we are able to interact with our contemporaries we can prove to the world that the church uh, has thought through the deep issues of existence, of being human, of what it means to live in the world and with each other, and that there's real answers there, and that these answers are sufficient to guide our life just as much as any other thing that's studied in this university. And so it seems to me that in a Catholic center, especially at a university like uh, New York University, really requires that sort of substantive engagement with the faith so that the students, again, are not just brought into the life of worship, but are also brought into the intellectual tradition of the church and that they can be bearers of that tradition and extend it to the people that they come in contact with. It was really weird at first to be here in the Catholic Center with the you know, really large windows and it was really you know, offsetting to um, see people you know, looking in while you're in daily mass and you, know, you feel kind of self-conscious of what's, what's going on. And, um, but after a while you, know, you get used to it and it's also it's kind of comforting 
to see that people are looking at you while you're you know, worshiping. I had a friend that came up to me the other day and was asking me what I was doing there and wanted to learn more about, about it and it was cool to be able to tell her. It's just a really good witness, I guess, to have all these windows on the outside so that anyone who walks by, they look in. So during mass, you see people just stop and stare at this man in a robe and they're wondering what's going on. Um, but it's cool because some people have actually come in and watched because they're curious. When we're in the chapel, we can see everyone who goes by and they can see us. It's really a different place to go to Mass than any other kind of church. But I think that it's really good because, because people can see in. They can, we have Holy Hour every day and people can walk by and see the Blessed Sacrament. And even if they don't know what it is or why it's important that that's happening, it still is happening. People are still in front of Jesus for a couple of seconds as they walk by. Cardinal Dolan um, called the center an icon of the new evangelization. And it has been really cool to see how that works. I think one of the best decisions about the Catholic Center was to make daily mass with an hour of adoration available Monday through Friday. And all the time, at least once or twice a week, we see people who maybe didn't know the center existed or didn't know that there was mass offered come in and join the community. Uh, you may have noticed that the windows are very large, almost from floor to ceiling, and there is nothing which is hidden within the building. Uh, you might have expected that, especially in the chapel, there would have been stained glass windows, or there wouldn't have been that immediate contact with the outside world. Whereas everything is visible here and everything is accessible. And that makes a statement about the openness, not simply of our presence here, but also of our mission. It's not simply to Catholics, it's not simply to committed believers, but it's to anybody who genuinely seeks God and who genuinely wishes to grow in, in the truth. Of course, anyone's welcome to come, so you never know who we can interact with, and we're always welcoming to everyone. Being the center of this university physically, it um, kind of shows a message that we're here and we're waiting for you, so um, come on in. Jesus tells us that those who would be my disciples must take up their cross and come behind me, must follow me. So we all embark when we embark on the process of discipleship on the way of the cross. In our chapel, what strikes people is the more than life-size figure of Christ. It's a, a copy of um, an 11th century Romanesque crucifix, and it dominates uh, the chapel. But more than that, it actually speaks to the world outside. Because when the lights are on in the chapel, People outside notice it straight away and at night, sometimes when I've been going away, you can see people stopping to look in. It captures their attention and their imagination. And so it's an invitation to all of those who pass by to come and worship. And it's the Lord who says, come to me, all you who labor on a heavy burden. And he stretches out his arms on the cross to welcome all of those because he offers the sacrifice of the cross on their behalf. So it's a wayside cross and we're very much by the wayside. And we invite people to say, yes, I will follow.